Do you get offended? Let me tell you folks, the quickest way to lose the respect of the people around you is to take offense and hold on to a fence. My name is Al Persson and you can contact me at pastor at mascot.church, pastor at mascot.church. And today we're talking about offense, taking offense, being offended, getting offended, and what that's all about. Years ago, this message was quite easy to preach, quite easy to deliver. It was easy to give a talk publicly about offense. You would stand up and say, you need to realize this is the key, this is how you handle offense and so on, and this is how you deal with the whole offended thing. It was easy then because most people, most people believed that it was wrong to get offended and to hold on to an offense. Most people believe that. Today, however, the tide has changed. Today, people who are offended are petted and, and fawned over and hugged and carried on and oh, it's terrible and, and, and laws upon laws and rules upon rules are there to protect people who have been or might be offended. And the level of offense can get to such a tiny, small degree that you just wonder how you're ever going to live or say anything without offending somebody. Your very existence might offend somebody these days. Now, um, let's just pop in and have a look at a single scripture. Then we're going to look at a definition of a new word that has appeared, uh, a new definition of a word that has appeared that uh, kind of helps us understand this language. First of all, from the book of Proverbs, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Wow. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Today, we probably don't quite get the sense of that without walls thing, but ancient cities, certainly the cities of the day when the book of Proverbs was, uh, was inspired, um, the majority of them had walls to protect them. So imagine a city without walls is easy to plunder, and that's, um, that's the context of that. So by ruling your spirit, you're like a city with walls. You protect and care for yourself. Well, there's a, a word that um, uh, was a coined or a definition for another word that was coined in the year 2010, apparently, and uh, it's the word snowflake. Uh, there's a new definition for the word snowflake, not just what you experience when you, uh, you know, in the wintertime or when you go skiing or whatever. Let's have a look at some popular definitions of the word snowflake. I just jammed a few of these on the page to follow and I'll read them. Uh, first one from Wikipedia, snowflake is a 2010s derogatory slang term for a person implying that they have an inflated sense of uniqueness, an unwarranted sense of entitlement, or an overly emotional, easily offended, and unable to deal with opposing opinions, or are overly emotional, easily offended, and unable to deal with opposing opinions. That's from Wikipedia. Now from Urban Dictionary, the top definition, snowflake a very sensitive person, someone who's easily hurt or offended by the statements or actions of others. This has nothing that it goes on. And now from dictionary.com, snowflake here is a political insult for someone who is perceived as too sensitive, often used for millennials and liberals. And from Wiktionary, in recent years, the meaning has expanded from a person who believes they're unique to denote someone who is too sensitive and easily offended. So I, you hear this word from time to time, that person is behaving like a snowflake, or that person is a snowflake, or that's the snowflake syndrome. What is that? It's the sense of the moment any heat comes, I melt. I was raised in cold, cold uh, Canada, and occasionally you would see, the, the, when the snow falls, you'd see just a single snowflake landing somewhere. If it's cold enough, it'll endure. If it lands on your palm that's a bit warm, it lands, it's gone instantly. And that's the whole sense of this, this easily offended thing. Well, the Bible has a lot to say about offense, and it lumps a group of, of conditions together. I'm going to pop them on the screen, and then we'll have a little look at these. They would be offense, unforgiveness, anger, strife, and envy. All of these are lumped together. They all behave the same way, and they all have a terrible... Con uh, uh, effects on not only the person holding them, but even to some extent on the people around them. 
So we're going to uh, start by looking at the positive, and this is from what's called the love chapter. This is a chapter commonly read at weddings and um, uh, commonly used to help people through relationship challenges from 1 Corinthians 13. You'll know a lot of this, but we're going to look, just look at a few verses in the middle of the passage from 4 to 7. Love suffers long and is patient. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. These are the qualities of love. You notice that it says love is not easily provoked. What's another word? Offended. Love is not easily offended. Okay, here we go. Offense is never given, but always taken. I'm going to say that again. Offense is never given, but always taken. Yes, someone may have chosen to offend me. Happens all the time. Someone may have chosen to offend another person. It happens all the time. But the issue is, I have a decision in my heart to make. Do I take the offense or do I not take the offense? Okay, now when I say happens all the time, you know, you, 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 people will say things. You say, oh, you know that, did, did you mean that because I'm tall? Did you mean that because I'm old? Did you mean that because, I'm, because of my race or because of my religion? And you, if you're ultra sensitive, you'll get offended. Now there are people, it's rarely happened to me, you'll come up to me and, 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 and just shout abuse at me. It does happen from time to time. Again, the issue here is I must not take offense. Do you know how hard it is, it is to live in a world where you wonder constantly if you're offending somebody all the time, even accidental speech? Now it's gotten so bad in the 2020s that people are considered to be uh, offenders even if they say and do nothing simply by their belief system or their uh, race or their gender or whatever. And it's like, well, you offend me because of. You hear that. Well, how can that person who just walked down the road offend you? How can that happen? Well, part of this is that there is now an offense industry. There's actually an offense industry. It's hard to believe, but it, it is, and it's a big money industry. It's, uh, uh, and again, let me come back to my opening comments. In the 2000, uh, around the turn of the millennium, it was easy to stand up and say, uh, and to talk about this in a church or a public place. And everybody knew that it was, uh, every smart person anyways, the majority of people knew it was wrong to take offense. Yeah, okay, we're not going to go out and insult somebody directly because of their race or because of their, their height or their gender or their looks or their disability. Of course not. And that's wrong to do that. And no one is saying that it's not. And the Bible even says, woe to those who produce offenses. So there's no question there. But the point was, way back then and, and for thousands of years in the past, offense is going to come, be strong, just realize it's not always meant, and even if it is meant, learn how to deal with it. When somebody does bring an offensive statement to you, initially something rises up on the inside. It's like, ugh. Learn to, learn to keep your mouth shut, take a deep breath, and respond, not react. Oftentimes people will say things because they're frustrated or because they're hurt or they're anxious or they're scared. They do not intend to offend you oftentimes because they just want to offend you. That's okay too. In each case, respond, don't react. Take a deep breath, it's all fine. Remember the choice here is that offense must not be taken. Learn not to take the offense. We live in a world today where people who take the offense are petted and are encouraged and are allowed to do all sorts of things there are laws against this and against that. And in fact, you've got uh, whole huge educational things happening 
things happening, programs happening in company after company, uh, constantly teaching people how not to take offense. I mean, how not now how not to take offense, how not to give offense. Don't offend here, don't offend there, don't do this, don't do that. Now, there have been some problems with a lot of this stuff at the moment in that it has begun to get to the place where it's even destroyed the precision of language. We have problems with, uh, with language and technology because common terms that we would use to describe certain conditions uh, that have nothing to do with, uh, with an offendable part of society now have to be changed. We have names that have to be changed because it might offend a race or group of people who used to live in a particular place. We have words that can't be said and some that shouldn't be said, of course. Uh, but we, we have uh, uh, concepts like, for example, um, oh, let me see, if you're an auto mechanic or a motorcycle mechanic or whatever, or if you do um, a system design, you use the phrase master and slave. This is the master process, this is the slave process. Well, that's one of those phrases now that's considered to be offendable because of, of slavery in the past and so on, and it goes on and on and on. Next thing you know, you, you, you are constantly wondering what you can and cannot say. Uh, I have to tell you, in a church situation, it happens very, very easily because a community of people grow together. And it's easy for one person to become a little bit agitated and to offend somebody else. And next thing you know, you've got problems. Well, I think this is one of the reasons why God wants us to attend church to worship him together. I'm convinced this is one of the reasons why that is important for Christians to do that. Why? Because we worship God who saved us and we demonstrate that we walk in love with each other and we make the sacrifice to walk in love with each other. The sacrifice. Sometimes it's difficult to do that. Sometimes it's very difficult to love your brother or your sister. Sometimes they do not have your best interests at heart. The point here is that offense is not given, it's taken. That's the way you should view it. I'm advising you after 40 years in the ministry to view offense as something taken, not given. Makes your life a whole lot easier, okay? You're the one who chooses whether you're going to be offended or not, and by and large, the choice should be no. Did I say by and large? At the end of the day, the choice should always be no. Will there be an emotional response? Of course there will be an emotional response if it touches something close to you. But ladies and gentlemen, your emotions are not your master. Your emotions are your servant. A lot of what we do in helping people grow up and mature is helping them to define what is the master of their life and what's the servant. Money should never be your master. It should be your servant. Sex should never be your master. It should be your servant. Your job should never be your master. It should be your servant. Your emotions, your emotions must never be your master. They must be your servant. I can tell you the fastest way that you can ever lose the respect of someone around you or people around you is to make emotional, highly sensitive, highly offended responses and never back down from them. Truly, people who do that lose their... You might think, think well, you know, I'm going to get the respect of my peers. Not for long. No, 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 no. A whole bunch of people constantly being offended by something will lose respect for each other very, very quickly and they lose the respect of those who could help them. It's very, very quick. One of the quickest ways to demonstrate that you are worth respecting is that you handle and keep your emotions as your servant, not your master. Think about it. Most of the time you've been hurt or offended has really been because of something that's touched your emotions. Yes, sometimes someone has stolen from you or sometimes someone has directly hit you. Yes, 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 I appreciate that. But the majority of times where you can say you're offended is because it touched your emotions. Hmm. What became your master at that time? So take it from the preacher who's been in ministry for 40 years. It's a lesson well learned. Here we go. Let's have a look at something else the scripture says. And remember that I looped all of these, uh, these sins or these conditions together. Offense, unforgiveness, anger, strife, and envy. So let's look at something that the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12. 
See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. That is a really powerful warning, and, and there are many warnings like it in Scripture, many in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the, in the book of Proverbs, you, you read this and you can look at stories of people's lives and see how offense destroyed their lives or made life terrible around them. Notice how that passage says that the root of bitterness springs up, causes trouble, and causes many to be defiled. Now, I know this to be true because of the scripture, but I have seen it, and I believe you have seen it too. You've seen one person in a family, a father or a mother or something, uh, someone who has uh, held on to a fence of some sort. Maybe there was, maybe they were correctly justified, not correctly, but justifiable. Maybe, maybe they were genuinely hurt in a physical or emotional way or whatever, or maybe it was just an offense, something spoken. I've seen the whole spectrum. I've seen the whole spectrum. But as they held on to it and as they took it inside and as they percolated it, they became bitter and it brought damage to all of their loved ones and to themselves. I have seen it bring sickness. I've seen it bring disease. I've told the story of a lady in our con uh, that, that I used to pray with who, who could never forgive her husband uh, who left her many years ago. And, and she was spiritual. She prayed. She's completely crippled with arthritis. I've heard other stories like this over the years and always mark them. We don't have time today to do this. Just want to keep our message into that 25 minute period. But you know yourself. You know, you, you might look at, at, at someone and say, that guy's just an angry guy. Or that's just an angry woman, constant anger. And, you, and you, can, you can see that sense of anger, bitterness, and offense there all the time. Well, what does it do? It defiles many. In fact, the Apostle Paul, I think it's Paul, uh, encourage fathers not to provoke their, their sons to anger. Don't teach your children to behave that way. Don't behave that way yourself and don't. Don't teach your children to take offense. Teach your children to be strong. Teach your children to put their emotions as to keep their emotions as servant, not master. Now remember I spoke about um, on the one side of this uh, how hard it is to live in a world where you constantly have to be careful not to offend anybody. That's tough. But mature, grown-up people can, can handle it. We can get used to it. But I'm going to tell you what's equally as tough, maybe tougher, maybe, may, well, yes, more damaging for sure, is living in a world where everything offends you or where you're easily offended. That's a self-imposed prison, ladies and gentlemen. It's a terrible place to live. Not only because it hurts you on your, not only because you're, you're emotionally burdened all the time, but because it's destructive. It's destructive to your health, it's destructive to your happiness, it's destructive to people around you. People who are easily offended live in a terrible prison, and we're encouraging it. We're encouraging it, and we're rewarding it. So um, you need to change your attitude towards offense. Now along with offense comes strife, that is striving, uh, fighting and envy and jealousy. You can understand how they all come together. The book of James chapter 316 has a very strong statement about that. Where there is jealousy and selfish, and where selfish, I'm sorry, I, because I memorized this in the Old English, I'm going to put it here and read it carefully. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. Where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work is what the King James says, but I'll stay here in the ESV. Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. The King James Bible uses the word strife, where there's envy and strife. There's what? There's confusion, disorder, and every evil thing. It comes on, it rides the crest of all of these things. So let's just look at the things that it ri that. that that bring all these things in your life. One more time, we've seen this again and again. Offense, unforgiveness, anger, strife, envy. These things together produce a whole range of miserable things in your life. Miserable things. Selfish um, disorder and confusion and frustration. I've known over the years when, when people come to me uh, and a, a bit of, uh, and remember, we've been at this for a long time. 
people come with difficulties and maybe we try to refer them to a counselor or sometimes we can just work through them. The questions that we ask, and my wife is very much the same, we might not ask the person, but we ask ourselves, we try to find out, is, you know, have you, how have you handled uh, hurt or rejection or whatever in the past? How do you handle it? What do you do with it? We try to find that out. People who internalize those things and cook on them and never let them go, bring about, bring for themselves untold misery. Untold, terrible misery, very often physical disease, frequently poverty, but not always. Not always physical disease either, but almost guaranteed to have emotional misery and unhappiness, okay? These things should not be taken into your soul, okay? Now, let's have a look at uh, something the Apostle Paul wrote where he talked about the, uh, the works of the flesh and the fruits of the Spirit. And uh, this is a, a way of contrasting what the, uh, the unregenerate, unbelieving person would, uh, would naturally do and what the Holy Spirit would produce or should produce in the life of the believer. And this is from Galatians chapter 5 and 22. This is Galatians chapter 5 and 22. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and, and, the, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with, the, with its passions and desires. If we live the, by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, and envying one another. Okay, let's look at the bottom line here. Don't become conceited, don't provoke one another, and don't envy one another. So yes, the scripture talks about giving offense, and it talks about taking offense, and it warns us not to provoke one another. But look at the list at the top. Look at the at the uh, emotional, the, the offense-related conditions, the second line, uh, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy. Then it goes on to drunkenness and, and, and orgies. Those are the qualities all looped together in the scripture that are related to offense. All of those things. Take offense, you're going to get involved in that territory. And uh, <laughs> you're gonna get involved in all of that. What will happen? Envy and strife confusion, and every evil work. Okay, as we're on the countdown, a couple of tips. Let's remind ourselves, offense is always taken, never given. Even if the person that you're dealing with intends to offend you, its impact on you is minimal or zero if you do not take the offense. Initially, when you are faced with or forced with something that might offend you, you'll get an emotional response on the inside or reaction on the inside. Just learn to put a lid on it. Doesn't take long to learn this. Put a lid on it. Be gracious. Be kind one to another. Tender hearted. Be gracious. The first thing I would ask myself if this happens, it takes years to, to, I've been doing this for years. It doesn't take years to learn it. It takes a couple of weeks to learn it and master it. It takes years to, you know, you learn things. The first thing I would ask myself is why did that person feel the need to do that? And I would immediately begin to understand uh, and have some compassion for them. Realize that people who give offense, who, uh, who constantly make you, try to make you angry, who constantly try to insult you or whatever, are very hurt and damaged people. Okay, that's important to understand. So a little bit of compassion is a good thing. Constantly check your heart to believe, to look and see if I'm angry, if I'm offended. Do I present an angry, offended um, element to the world? Do I maybe even the, for your friends around you? Do I look angry? Do I whatever? But you know on the inside, what is taking up my time? Is it anger? Just that guy said this, I will never forgive him. You know you're in a terrible, terrible place. Well, you might say, well, I'll forgive him, but I want to get even. Come on now, grow up. You know what I'm talking about. 
I've got this rage on the inside. Learn to understand it and do that. Now, thankfully, in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us who makes that aspect of calming and taming our emotions radically easier. But we still fail. Otherwise, the scripture would not be warning Christians about that. Okay, so offense is always taken. Learn to put your emote, keep your emotions uh, as, a, learn to keep your emotions as your servant, not your master. When someone does go to offend you, just, 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 Hold on to the reaction, learn to react and not respond. It's probably worth drilling on this a little bit when you're quiet asking God to give you help and strength. When you do accidentally say something that might offend someone or whatever, then be open-handed and apologize. Ask them to forgive you, okay? And you need to realize that there are traps out there today that have not been there before. Our society has shifted to a society where people were emotionally mature and they, they realized that, yes, offense happens from time to time, so what? Let's deal with it. And that was probably in the last millennium up to the year, uh, up to the mid-80s, I think you could find that. And then a sense of entitlement seemed to take over in the mid-80s up until now it's gotten extreme where we actually pet people and we encourage people who are offended. We give them platforms and we say, well, you know, I'm offended because of this and because of that. And this is making life really difficult for many at the moment. Those of us who are mature and grown up will understand how to deal with it, but many others will either just, just be nubbled or, or whatever or by, by what's going on up until it settles out. And there's some pushback. Finally, people are growing up a little bit. You don't want to be a snowflake. You don't want to be someone who the moment somebody disagrees with you, you get hot under the collar and you just got to get your right answer. People are going to disagree with you. You don't have to be right. You do not have to have the right opinion and the right answer all the time. That's fine. That's okay. You don't need the last word either. We need to realize that uh, living in harmony requires understanding the people who are around us. Why do I always end my sermons with these words, be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Be tender hearted. Okay, our opening scripture here was, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. I want to ask you, do you get offended? Mm. My name is Al Person. You can contact me at pastor at mascot.church. I'll be back next week.